Hello and welcome to part two in a series of tutorials where I will be showing you how to build your very own line chart racer using data that comes from Excel. If I just run you the final code, I will show you what we aim to, aim to produce by the end of this part. So just be two parts in this series and at the end of this part you'll be able to have the knowledge to build exactly what I'm showing you on the screen here. We have seven different lines. If I just remind you also, we have our legend in the right corner. We also have our title for our chart and titles for each of our axes as well. And notice that the X axis is fixed and the Y axis updates as the points get updated. So that's our final goal. And this is where we got up to at the end of part one, where we had our graph being built and all that's needed next is to populate populate the graph with the lines and with the data and have it animated so that it populates over time and also add the legend key here in the top right corner. Okay, right. The first thing we need to do is we need to specify our X points and our Y points. So if I just show you the Excel we're using here, notice that we have year, and each one of the regions. And year will be our X point, and each one of these regions will be our Y lines. So this will be our Y1, Y2, so on and so forth. Okay, and how we do that is we can type in X equals, and then XLD, which is calling our XL data. And then if we, in brackets, type in year, that will specify the year column as our X line. Here, if I just zoom in a bit. So if you have X equals XLD and you type in brackets year in quotation marks, we have specified year as our X axis. And we can do the same thing for the Y lines, so each one of the Y lines, Y1 to Y7, I've called them. So Y1 is XLD and then brackets North America, calling the North America column as our first line on the Y axis that will be populated as time goes by. Same for Y2, instead of call, I've specified it to be the Europe and Central Asia column, and then so on and so forth, naming each region, each column as we go along. The next thing we need to do is we need to give a specific color to each line, and we also need to label it so that the legend knows what to call each line with that color. The first thing we need to do here is we need to go up to the top and we need to import matplotlib.patches as MP. And this is a specific part of the matplotlib module, which will enable us to um, specify and give more sort of customizations to our lines and our graphs. And so once you've imported matplotlib.patches, there's a matplotlib.patches as MP, once you've done that, we can start to label our, give more customizations to each one of our lines. So if I type in Y1 underscore ledge for the legend, so we'll be using this to help populate our legend. If we type in MP dot patch, MP calling our module we named above dot patch, patch is its own function. And if in, in brackets, if we type in color equals red, and then comma label equals North America. What we've done here is we have specified our Y1 data to be red and to give it the label North America. And I've done exactly the same thing for Y2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 for each one of our Y lines. I haven't done it for the X, X, X line or the X axis because there's no need to include that in this legend. So once you've got the data ready for our legend to be produced and we've specified our lines, the next thing we need to do is actually draw the legend. We need to associate the legend onto the graph. And we do that by typing in fig1.legend. And fig1 is the figure we specified up here when we typed in fig1 equals plt.figure and then we specified the fig size. We did that in part one. So if you're not too sure how that came about, then please do go back to part one. 
So if we type in fig1.legend, what we're doing is specifying a legend for the figure one that we created previously. And in the handles equals, we just specify each one of our legend lines that we created using mp.patch. The next thing we need to do is specify a font size. I've given it a font size 14 to make it stand out in the screen. And I've also specified it to be in the upper right corner because that's the best place for it to be um, in this graph. I found it to be, for me, the best, the suited, su most suitable place for this graph. So if I've specified loc equals upper right, that's the location of the legend to be upper right. Cool. So once we've done that, let's just run the graph again and we hit notice here that we have our legend in the top right corner with our colors and our labels for each one of those lines looking good looking good the next thing we need to do is now combine our actual data with with our graph and then animate it so up here we just specified the titles of each one of the lines and we've also created our legend as well but now we need to actually get the data in there and how i've done this is i've created a blank list for each one of our y values with the x value that's associated with it and then i have also then what happens is that as time goes by that list this list here will populate with first having one point and then two points after one second and then three points after the second second and so on and so forth to get the animation effect. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've created uh, a blank list for the X value and for each one of the corresponding Y values because each point on the graph has an X and Y value. So we've got seven lines here but each one of those seven Y value lines will also have to have an X value associated with it which is why I've included the X value as well. The next thing we need to do is create our animate function. This is the actual function that will be used to sort of have the graph updating after a certain period of time until the, there's no more data to be displayed. Okay, so how this works is, I've just unhidden a few, but how this works is what will happen is we will append xi so i is representative of each one of these rows in our excel data so i will start out to be 1960 and then all the points associated with it and then it will basically create a loop where the next i will be the next row down and then the next i after that will be the next i down and so on and so forth until you've gone all the way down using all of these data points and so what will happen is each time i is updated, these points here, x, val, x, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, and y7, if I unhide that as well, will be appended to this list. So this list starts out as nothing, which is why you see the graph initially as nothing, as completely blank. And then the animate function will gradually populate it, gradually populate it with each one of these rows when i is updated. I hope you're still with me here. Cool. So once this list is populated, we then need to plot these new x valves and y val coordinates together. And that's exactly what these next set of rows do. So this section here plots the x val with its y val coordinate. So our first line will be the first x val column with the first y1 val column. So that i in the first animation loop will be x val and y1 val with the first i here in here. So this will populate this and then this section here will plot the point based upon this. And we do that for each one of the y lines. Cool, but that is just the function that we've created here. So in order to get that animation effect, we actually need to use, it's just one line, but it's one line of pure magic that gets this whole thing pulled together and animated. And it's drawing off the um, animation.function animation part of our P 
PLT module here from our map.lib import animation module. So that's what we're using here. So if we type in from map.lib import animation, we can then use this animation effect to get this graph going. So if we type in any equals and then animation dot function animation, oh, this list keeps on appearing, so annoying. Animation dot function animation. And then if we type in the brackets, we type in plt.gcf and gcf stands for get current figure. So if we type in plt.gcf, we are getting the current figure that we've created up here in in our part one tutorial. And what we are doing is we are also then, if you type in comma and then animate, this animate is this function here. This is what causes our animation to happen. So what we've done now is we've linked our graph with the points that we want with our animation function. And then if I type in comma again, I can specify how long I want it to be between each run of this animate loop. So if I type in interval equals a thousand, that number after after interval is in milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds is every second. So I've what I've done here is plot GCF is I've got my GC PLT graph that I created here along with the legend. And then animate is I've linked this function with our graph and then I specified the interval I want this to be running every time. So every second this loop will update. This loop here in this function. Okay, so if I run it now, that should be everything put together and everything created. And you'll have your very own line chart racer, hopefully. Yes, here we go. You see, we have our points updating, specifying each color of the point. So yellow, Sub-Saharan Africa, yellow going along here. Black, East Asia and Pacific, East Asia and Pacific here. And we also have our year on the X axis. And we have our Y axis being updated as well as the points get updated. And this will keep going until the points run out from this Excel data here. And then once you get to 2050, it will just be blank, 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 and so on and so on. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. Please do check out part one if there's some things a bit iffy on. Please do go back and watch part two as well for the same thing. And please do subscribe if you liked it. And don't forget to share it if you think someone else can benefit from this. Thank you very much for watching.